What a statement from Buzz Williams last night after the NIT opening round uh, victory for Texas A&M. Was that Alcorn State they played? Yes. I mean, no one's watching that game. Uh, some did. Uh, everyone watched, at least I would be glued to how Buzz Williams is going to respond for the first time publicly. And for seven and a half minutes, he, sp- he read from like three or four, uh, it was a scripted statement, three or four sheets of paper that he wrote out. And Chad, he, uh, I know you watched it as well. He starts by saying, hey, this is going to be lengthy and this is the only time I'm going to address it this offseason because everything I want to say about the selection committee process, I'm about to say. And, and it was great. He said, you know, when you're fully it started with, if you're fully committed to a worthy cause, you are inside of that cause and working for it. So I haven't had much time to think about it other than the hours after the decision. And like you said, I'm going to say it once and that's it. He said he was completely devastated and heartbroken trying to understand the data that the committee was looking at. And in trying to understand that, he started a deep dive into determining the committees who determine the committee members and the motives that those committees have in the selection process of determining the body of the group of people that ultimately decide whether you're in or out as an at-large and where you're seated and where you're playing. And he said he wanted to do this specifically for him, for his coaches, for his players, and those parents. And he brought copies of his research to everyone in attendance. Um, and that reminds me, I need to try to look this up on Twitter to see if I can find a copy of his research. Because he said it's lengthy, he didn't want this to become a math, uh, math class, so he printed off copies for everyone to take home. Um, Turn your syllabus to page three. He says please. it defies logic not to be in the tournament based on the criteria that he believed the committee was looking at, at least initially. And... In response, and I asked Kermit about this, Kermit Davis, while he was in studio with us to begin the show, uh, because there have been times where he was an at-large option and he was left out. His first team out last year in the tournament. And he he agreed. They deal in generalities. There's no specific set of criteria that they say, okay, Buzz, here's why Texas A&M was not selected. And by the way, they weren't just among the first four teams out, they were the fourth team of the four teams with the options to play. And we know that because the, they, they give you the first four teams and then they tell you which teams are going to get called in the first round if there's a COVID issue with a team that can't participate. Dayton was the team that was going to get the first phone call. A&M was fourth on that list. So they weren't even close to getting in as an at-large despite making a run all the way to the SEC championship game and winning down the stretch after Valentine's Day. Well, and that was the big surprise on CBS during the selection show when they released the next, the, the first four out and Dayton being there. Uh, they were all surprised saying, well, if Richmond did not upset Davidson, then Dayton would have been in the tournament. Chad, and no one had them that close to the tournament. Here are your replacement teams. Dayton at 23 and 10. Oklahoma at 18 and 15. SMU at 23 and 8, and then Texas A&M at 23 and 12. And making the run that they did, uh, beating Auburn, beating Arkansas, and falling to Tennessee in the championship game. Uh, Williams went on. He said, I've only been given generalities. There's nothing specific about the, the data info that I was given or that I could find. He said, quote, I've lost all respect and faith in the system and those that are in it, end quote. And then he started to tear up and cry as he read his statement about five and a half minutes in when he mentions the players who chose to stay an extra year at A&M to make a run like they did. And he said throughout his entire years of coaching, he's never had a group come together and play with the type of effort and mentality that that team did towards the middle of conference play. And he said, until there is complete transparency, the system will remain broken. Allowing a personal bias to impact the process should not be allowed. This disgusts me that the system and the adults in the system prohibited our players from playing in the tournament. Now, Dayton and Oklahoma and SMU, we're not hearing from them. 
But there are other programs that would have a gripe. I like the fact that he sat down after a win in the NIT and said, here's what I've got to say about it. Yeah. Now, now what comes of this? Nothing. Nothing. Because, uh, I mean, it's a storyline now, and as soon as the games tip off tomorrow, it's no longer talked about. A&M is a non-issue as far as the national perception in the media and the 24-hour news cycle. So until it becomes the issue, like NIL, until it becomes the issue, transparency is not going to happen with the selection process. And, and part of that is ESPN is, you know, they're a huge part of it, right? They get the selection. Uh, they, they get all of the discussion and, and, and fodder and all the news. And then you have CBS who, you know, has the top games of the week and they've got the tournament. They've got the selection show and the unveiling. They're not overly critical about anything on that show. Um, and then you have the studio shows on True TV. and I mean, it's all just uh, very basic and bland in their analysis of this. So until they're asking the tough questions that Buzz Williams is trying to answer, no, nothing's going to happen here because no one has to answer for it.